Today we're going to look at the average amount of time that GVSU students spend on their cell phones per day. I have heard that Americans spend 90 minutes per day, but because GVSU students or college students in general are more social, I'm interested in seeing if more than 90 minutes is spent per day by GVSU students. So that's what I want to be able to show. I'm going to do the test using an alpha of 0.05. So that helps me to know how to do the test, so what I'm looking for and how to make my decision in step four. I also, because I don't have raw data, I need to have my sample size. So I have 59 GVSU students. I need the sample mean. So I have a sample mean of 129 minutes. And then I also need standard deviation. So I have a standard deviation of 97.45 minutes. And then finally, I need information on what we're measuring. So here we're measuring time spent on phones, and then we also need the population. So that's going to be by GVSU students. So as we just said in step one, we're identifying the population as being GVSU students. And then the sample is going to be the 59 GVSU students that the data is based off of. So this more than 90 minutes is what we're going to use and alternative. So here we're going to have a mu. And let's define that mu in step one as being mu equals mean because mu is the population mean. Then what we're measuring, so mean time spent on phones per day and then the group. So that would be by Grand Valley students. So that's how we're defining this mu, mean time spent on phones per day by GVSU students. We wanna show that it's more than 90 minutes. That's our research hypothesis or our alternative. So mu is greater than 90 is the alternative. So the null is mu less than or equal to 90. So then we're going to do testing in step three. As a reminder, our assumption is that the sampling distribution of X bar has a normal distribution. And to verify that assumption, we have to either check sample size or we have to check that the original population is bell-shaped. Well, we've talked about how the best way for us right now to check conditions is to see if we have what's considered a large sample size. So with an n of 59, that's greater than 30. So we're going to say our conditions are met. But remember, it's valuable for you to also check what your data looks like. And if there are any extreme outliers, make sure that you have a large enough sample size that can withstand this. So then we'll calculate our test statistic. And as a reminder, the formula is x bar minus mu naught divided by standard error. So our x bar was 129. And then we have a mu naught or null value of 90. And then we're dividing that by standard error. So to do that, we'll enter the numerator and put that in parentheses and then the denominator. And we come up with a test statistic of 3.07. So now we have the ability to make a decision on the null. First, remember we have a t distribution and we know that because we calculated a t test statistic up here with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So n was 59, so we have 58 degrees of freedom. So then the t gives us a location on the curve. So these curves are centered at 0. 3.07 would put us here. And then also remember that the alternative helps us to know the direction we're interested or how to highlight. This is a right tail test because we're pointing this direction or the greater than side. So we're interested in the right-hand side of our test statistic or above. 
And so with these, remember, we're going to be using that second verse. We use the T CDF. And remember that this wants a lower bound, so where the highlighting starts. So here our highlighting starts at our test statistic. Then it wants an upper bound, or where the highlighting ends. Technically, these upper bounds are at positive infinity, but these calculators can't handle infinity. So we'll use 999 to substitute for infinity. And then it finally wants degrees of freedom. So we have 3.07 where the highlighting starts, where it ends at 999 or infinity, and then degrees of freedom. So our p-value, this highlighted area is 0 0.002. So with a p-value that's that small, we want to know if it's less than alpha, which is equal to 0.05. So here is the p-value less than alpha. Well, that is true, so we'll make the decision to reject the null. So remember when you reject, you start your conclusion in step five saying there is sufficient evidence. To suggest and then we restate our alternative in words. So up here our alternative is mu greater than 90. So we're gonna say there's sufficient evidence to suggest. And we defined mu as being mean time spent on phones per day by GVSU students. So that is our right tail test for a hypothesis test for one population mean. Mm -hmm.